Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Thermal Expansion. This time, we're going to be covering how you can make an easy early game renewable energy source with just a few machines and some pipes. So when last I left off, I was about to show you a little bit about the tree farms and the arboreal extractors and how wonderful they can be. Well, testing them on a bunch of vanilla trees, you'll get different things. Resin on uh, birch trees, as you can see here. Uh, you'll get sap from oak trees as well as dark oaks. Uh, you'll also get resin from any of the other trees like the uh, acacia or the jungle woods. The one that you really want, though, is the spruce wood. Unless, of course, you really want sap, in which case then you could go with either of the oaks. But resin. Resin is where it's at for what I'm about to show you, and that's uh, how an early game way of uh, renewable energy can be made. If you get yourself spruce sapling and grow it up to a nice, big, tall, strong tree, then you can get yourself resin at double the speed. So allow me to get myself uh, an extractor here. And the reason I, I know this is because I, I actually did a lot of testing with it. And it will start gathering resin much faster than uh, some of the other ones. Now, I did place it down slightly before the others, but you'll see that it, it will uh, start gathering things. Of course, this one's going to get sap, so it's going to be much less that it, it obtains. But um, it, actually, sap should be obtained at a similar rate uh, to your standard trees here. The, this one's probably about to get 50. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But you can see this one's at 100. This one's still at 50, and your jungle wood is at 50, so it, it's already going much faster. It's going, it is slow though, very slow. And if you notice, a lot of these trees are missing their leaves, but not all of them. So the idea behind this is you can grow a sapling, cut off most of its leaves, but you're going to want to leave at least the top row, if not a couple uh, on top, just to be sure, because if you remove that, these stop functioning. Also, something of note, if it's no longer on a dirt block, these stop functioning. So you're going to want to keep at least a dirt block, the stem of the tree, and at least one or two layers of leaves towards the top, and these should still function. Uh, you can place it on trees that are already existing, or you can grow them. But if you hand build them, like you place a bunch of wood and then you uh, place some leaves around it, it's it's not going to work. It has to be grown or already existing in the world. So that that's kind of a bummer, kind of cool. I, I, it's up to you how you want to interpret that. Now, of course, I grew a spruce that's a two by two, and I cut it all down. It, you know, trimmed off all the excess leaves, and they all work around the outside edge. But if you try and use one of these above it, it's not going to work. It has to be on the base of the tree as well. So that's something else to keep in mind. It has to be on dirt, has to be on the uh, ground level or the lowest part of the wood of the tree, and it has to have at least leaves on the top couple blocks, if not the top block. Uh, and of course, you can surround it completely with these things on all the uh, flat sides. If you put one here, it's not really going to be harvesting anything. But you can put it on all the flat sides of a tree and get uh, four of them per wood block. Of course, if you have the um, the the two by two pattern, then that's going to be you know doubled. But you know, you're you're it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Now, how to create an easy source of renewable energy without a tree farm, so you don't get all that lag from chopping down trees, rebuilding them, chopping down trees, rebuilding them in some kind of automated uh, way. There are some things I'm going to need to show you, and that is, uh, for instance, a fluid duct. This is added by Thermal Dynamics. Recipe for it is just copper, glass, and copper. Very simple. On top of that, we're going to be needing some leadstone flux ducts. And this is also added by the same mod, and this is just redstone, some lead, and some glass. It's a very cheap recipe. You get a bunch of them from each uh, build. And in a fractionating still, don't forget that you have a power, you're going to need to insert resin, it will then create rosin and tree oil as a byproduct. We're going to be making use of all of this. So, this is not by any means an ideal setup. I set it up, and it's not compact either. I set it up so that it would be easy to describe and you guys could see it. Now currently it looks messy, but it's actually not that bad. You start off with arboreal extractors around a spruce, preferably spruce, tree. It doesn't have to be. It could be some of the other ones. But it will need to be a resin producer in order to uh, get what we need out of it. 
over time it will very slowly get resin. You can always upgrade that with, you know, getting some more of the fertilizer. But you will want to add some fluid ducts to those to pump that out. Now, of course, don't forget, you're going to want each one of these to, uh, you know, go out at the bottom. I just turned that to input, but I'm going to show you everything first, and then I'm going to start activating it. Because right now I don't want to start pumping this into here just yet. Next, you're going to want to have the arbor arboreal extractors feeding into a fractionating still, which, of course, is going to need power, but it's currently going to start doing the one thing that we need it to do. Now, it's pumping in the bottom, so I'm going to have it come in to here. Next, we're going to need a power generator. A steam dynamo is a good start. That'll be our first source of getting power. Now, of course, this one does not have any kind of ins or outs that you can uh, configure on it. So you're going to want that probably next to it. And it's going to be burning rosin. Uh, where is it here? Uh, we've got here rosin, which is going to be made from the resin. And then that's going to be generating more power. So it's going to be making this circle of life. Uh, now, in order to do so, we're going to want to output this area to the side that the dynamo is attached to. So let's have this go out. There we go. Yellow is out. That's going to feed into the steam dynamo. Now, from that, it's going to also need more than just a solid fuel. It needs a liquid. And that's where the aqueous accumulator comes in, which doesn't use power either. Doesn't use power, and the arboreal extractors don't use power. Currently, the only things that use power is going to be the fractionating still, which is going to help us generate even more power than it uses. So that's how we're basically going to be getting this done. Now, aqueous accumulator, I surrounded it with three blocks for now just because I like to see the face of, of the machines that I'm using. I, I suppose I could have had it facing a different direction. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it is currently not uh, extra extracting anywhere. So I want it to feed out the top of the block. Here's the front face. Top of the block is going to be output and it's going to start feeding into here. The steam dynamo, you can see it's filling up now, which is wonderful. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Now, it's also feeding into something else, a compression dynamo, which I will show you that in a moment. Uh, so for the moment, just know that it, it's currently going to be using, uh, well, a lot of things. <laughs> Let's start with having this actually start extracting from here. I'm going to actually turn each one of the I'm each one of these usually you'll want to have feeding out but for now this thing is so full that I'm just going to have the one feeding out. So now this is outputting and it should start feeding into the fractionating still which has got an input down here. And you can see that the uh, resin is slowly being fed into the fractionating still. With this the resin is going to start being processed and turned into rosin if it has power. So I have that steam dynamo here sitting next to it that is not being able to produce anything. I have therefore put some leadstone flux ducts on top of it so that it will then connect over to it. And if you uh, place down one of these uh, steam dynamos next to this, it automatically does that, which can be very confusing. So in order to change the way that it moves, you just take a crescent hammer and move it around. Now a crescent hammer is just some iron ingots and a tin ingot. And therefore you can change its facing as you want so that it's uh, feeding the way that it uh, you need it to. Wherever the red top is is where the power comes out from. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's permanent, but uh, as a general sense, that's, that's how you want it to be. So I have this facing up. I added some leadstone flux duct, which is a uh, power cable that runs from the top of this into a fractionating still. Fractionating still is therefore going to start accepting power once this is generating some. All you need to start this thing to kickstart it is a minimum of three sticks. I put that in there. It will then process this. The power goes up into the system and generates at least 3000 RF, which uh, you only need 2500, but it's enough that this is going to start processing the uh, resin into a piece of rosin. Now don't forget that it is currently automatically outputting on the side into the steam dynamo. And it's going to be another burnable material, which is already being fed with water, so it's going to renew. And every single time that it generates one of these, it's going to generate 8,000 RF. All right, it's nearly done. You can see that it's almost out of power, and it will generate that one piece whoop, that instantly went over into the steam dynamo and started generating power. It's 
slowly being burnt up. And look at all this power coming into the fractionating still. So once that is filled up and another one of these is made, you can see it's being made much faster now. It will then feed another one into the steam dynamo, slowly over time, as the arboreal extractor resin is being withdrawn from the machines into the fractionating still. Now remember, I'm just doing this to demonstrate also that you cannot remove the dirt block. I recommend you have the fluid ducts up on top or some kind of pressurized version so that you don't have any kind of issue with getting the liquid to the fractionating still. Uh, but in this case, I was just doing it to uh, kind of knock home that you have to keep that dirt block on the bottom of the uh, tree or else these aren't going to work anymore. Now, you'll notice that we're starting to create some tree oil. This is where the real power is. Yes, this is good, but the steam dynamo without being upgraded is just going to, over time, once it, all the power is uh, generated and it starts backing up, it will just burn the rosin anyway, even if we don't need the power. So you're going to want to uh, kind of amplify that a bit because this is only going to generate so much, 40 RF per tick. You can increase that a lot, and especially if you have a way of storing it by using a compression dynamo. Now a compression dynamo, as before in my previous video, listed out that it can work with water and another type of uh, fluid. If you click here, it'll say, you know, the different types. We're going to be using tree oil for 1 million RF per bucket. So how do we get that in there? Well, not a problem. Currently on the fractionating still, we just have it pumping into the compression dynamo, which is already being fed by the same water from our aqueous accumulator. Now let's just click on the fractionating still. This is the uh, back of it, so therefore we want it to output. And that's this red area here, and you notice that it lit up right away, and it is currently now making RF. And it's going at quite the rate. There we go, maximum power straight ahead. This thing is now powered, this is now backing itself up with more power, and this is backing itself with more power. And this is just going to constantly run. You don't need to keep filling coal in there or more sticks or anything. That's it. You can just tap into this now. Grab yourself uh, some more leadstone flux duct. Now this is beginning level stuff, but I mean, you, you've got renewable energy. And now you can take this with uh, just run it along some kind of path that you want. Take all of your uh, thermal uh, expansion. You've got your induction, let's see, sawmill, we'll do a, we've got a furnace in here somewhere too. We'll do the furnace and a pulverizer, those are the things that you're really going to be needing. So let's see, a sawmill, uh, we've got a pulverizer, we've got our uh, induction smelter, heck, we've got a redstone furnace, and all these things are now being powered by your renewable energy source that you don't need to worry about anymore really nice you can increase this you can double it you can uh, you know enhance your different machines of course with some exceptions the devices cannot be enhanced you can even uh, you know add in more uh, fertilizer that you can make later on but this is a really really good way of not having to worry about uh, you know just constantly adding in coal or using your coal or charcoal reserves for this type of stuff now you have all the resources to you know double your your uh, your Sorry, it double your, your wood or one and a half times your wood, pulverize all your ores, plus smelt up your food, anything that you need at that point. It's a really good, easy, early game setup, and I hope that you guys will be able to benefit from it. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to spread the mischief to others. And uh, until next time, folks, I'll see you.